pleasure and a privilege to be here this morning at the extension for community healthcare outcome Eco India partner lunch training in our state. Eco India initiatives marks a significant milestone in our collective effort to bridge the gap in healthcare delivery and ensure that quality care reaches every corner of our state. When Nagaland attained statehood, our health infrastructure was under acute. With limited access to advanced medical technologies and trained healthcare professionals. Today, healthcare facility in the state has been significantly enhanced in all district hospitals. We have TB, tuberculosis, and Chase disease hospitals, a state mental health institute, community health centers, and our state's first medical college in the state capital. Construction of more medical college is in full swing and laying a foundation stone for nursing colleges in Kohima and Mon are in the pipeline. The priority of our state government has always been to provide comprehensive health infrastructure to all the citizens of the state and a proactive approach is to ensure healthcare that is accessible, affordable, and available to all at the right time and in the right place. One of the key initiatives in this endeavor is the Chief Minister Health Insurance Scheme, designed specifically for the people of Nagaland. This whole scheme launched in collaboration with the center with the central government's Ayushman Bharat scheme is a significant step towards achieving Nagaland's 2030 Sustainable Development Goal, which was launched in August 2021. This goal strives to guarantee that all citizens of Nagaland have access to fair, economical, and high quality medical care by 2030. Department of Health and Family Welfare is contemplating to introduce more services under Chief Minister Health Insurance Scheme in the days to come. This will achieve the intent of comprehensive healthcare infrastructure in the state. Any permanent and indigenous residents of the state who are not enrolled in Ayushman Bharat or any other publicly funded insurance program can be covered under Chief Minister Health Insurance Scheme. Nagaland being a community-driven society by involving community and imparting trainings will empower primary health clinicians in rural and undeserved areas with the knowledge and support that they need to provide expert level care. This standard of knowledge ensures that every patient regardless of where they live can receive the highest standard of care. It is about equity empowerment and excellence in healthcare. Today, as we bring this innovative model to our state, we are not just launching a program, but we are igniting a movement. A movement that will transform the health landscape in our state, making specialized knowledge accessible to all healthcare, healthcare providers, irrespective of their geographical locations. Once again, I appreciate our Eco India partners, supporters for coming forward to impart training to our dedicated healthcare professionals. Your commitment and patience for improving healthcare in India are truly commendable. In closing, I urge the healthcare providers to embrace this opportunity, participate actively in the eco sessions and become a part of this transformative movement. Let us work together to ensure that every citizen in our state has access to the quality health care they deserve. Thank you, God bless. It really signifies uh, our shared commitment to advancing the health of well-being of our state, Nagaland.
the government of, uh, of Nagaland has stood fast in its focus on improving the lives uh, of its citizens, recognizing the pivotal role that healthcare plays in enhancing overall quality of life, significant investment has been made to bolster the healthcare infrastructure across the state. A prime example of this commitment of the government and uh, every citizen of Nagaland is the inauguration of Nagaland Institute of Medical Sciences and research uh, that is NIMSAR in Kohima. This institute is not merely a hospital, but also a beacon of research and innovation. The establishment of NIMSAR marks a significant uh, milestone, promising, promising a tremendous upsurge of healthcare upliftment and development in the healthcare sector. The government's vision uh, to extend is to extend beyond the urban center. I mean, uh, in the centers, uh, there is a concerted effort to ensure that the knowledge and benefits at the center extend to the peripheries and reaches to the furthest corner of Nagaland. It is imperative that individuals in urgent need of healthcare can access to it promptly. Without the burden of moving the patient across great distances, thereby saving lives, conserving both uh, time and resources, the strengthening of health uh, facilities, upgrading of the existing ones, and deployment of advanced medical technologies in all the parts of of this comprehensive strategy. Moreover, there has been a significant push to enhance the skills and the capability of our healthcare professionals. Training programs, workshops, and continuous education opportunities are being provided to ensure that the healthcare uh, providers are well equipped to meet the ever-evolving health needs of our communities. This holistic approach ensures that the benefits uh, of improved healthcare system are maximized and that our people receive uh, the best of the public health care. In this crucial endeavor, we have a steadfast partner in Eco India. Through their unique and uh, visionary model, Eco India facilities and uh, the transfer of knowledge without uh, the need to move the people from one place to the another place or from one end to another end. This collaboration ensures that the healthcare providers in the remotest uh, receive mentorship and can discuss their cases with specialists located anywhere in the different districts of Nagaland and even to the nation. The, this approach uh, not only en enhances the capacity uh, of, the, uh, of our local health providers, but also significantly improves the quality of health uh, delivered to our communities at the primary level. Uh, with the spirit of leaving no one behind, we are striving to achieve universal health coverage uh, and expanding the realm of the comprehensive primary health care through the health and wellness centers. Over the next, uh, the next two days, we will delve into the pressing health challenges and opportunities that lie ahead for our state. This platform is a test testament of our collective dedication and concern to improving health uh, outcomes and ensuring access to quality healthcare for every single citizen 
in IT. I am optimistic that the discussion, the, uh, the insights uh, shared here will pave the way for meaningful and sustainable progress of the healthcare delivery system in our, in our state. Uh, here, I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to our esteemed speakers, uh, our resource person, including the, our honorable health minister and the, of the state, and uh, uh, principal director of Health and Family Welfare for their constant support, upholding and uplifting the department uh, in surging forward and also for the participation today. Uh, your participation reflects your sincere concern for the health of the people of your state. So, thank you, sir. Uh, your presence and contribution is also a source of immense inspiration for all of us here today. Lastly, uh, let us take this opportunity to share knowledge exchange ideas, and build lasting partnership. That will propel our mission forward to a much greater height. Together, I believe we can create a healthier, stronger, and a resilient Nagaland. With that, I wish this training a very fruitful one. Thank you and God bless. To share about a little bit about ECHO and how uh, we are on track um, to the goal that our founder, uh, uh, Dr. Sanjeev Arora, had said. He had said, look, by 2025, I want you to touch, everyone at ECHO, to touch the lives of a billion people. And the only way we will do that is working closely in partnership with NHMs and with people uh, like you all, who will support us in reaching out and helping the underserved. Our commitment is to sustainable development and community empowerment. We firmly believe that if the right knowledge is at the right place, it will deeply impact and change people's lives. You know, I would like to thank all of you all. All of you all, a lot of you all have traveled from uh, you know, uh, remote areas to come here, uh, left your work, left your families to come and spend these two days with us. You know, my heartfelt thanks to you all, because without you all, there is nothing ECHO can do. It is only through you all and working through the ECHO model that we will be able to touch the lives of the people in the underserved areas. So, you know, this is my first time in Nagaland, and I, you know, I have been saying this to everybody. This is on my bucket list, to come here and spend more time. This is truly God's own country. This is such a beautiful country. My wife has threatened me. She said, the next time if you're going alone, don't come back. You better make sure that I am on the trip with you all. And I promise you, I am looking forward to that. You know, it is, it's just, it's just, too beautiful, you know, and we worked here, we, it has, you know, Nagaland and all of the Northeast has been a focus area for us, you know, we worked with programs like the COVID-19 vaccination confidence and advocacy program that was during the times of COVID to increase the trust in the COVID vaccination. We've also done the certificate course on tobacco control. Uh, training thousands of school administrators and teachers on tobacco laws, uh, universe, universal immunization program. Uh, essentially, all of that has been honestly done by you all. We've just tried to be this catalyst uh, and, and you know, work through your efforts at reaching out and touching the lives of many people. Here. So what I will try and do in this presentation is, is share a bit about ECHO, ECHO's journey and what is the ECHO model. And then over the course of today and tomorrow, you all will get a much deeper understanding. As Rohan had said, please feel free to ask a lot of questions. We will try and address them to the best of our ability. 
and the more interactive these sessions get, uh, you know, the richer is the learning. And in ECHO, we always believe in the motto, all teach, all learn. So as much as we will try and share our learnings with you, we will also take back a rich trove of learnings and knowledge from you. Okay, so what is ECHO India's mission? It's empowering primary clinicians with the right medical knowledge that can save millions of lives. You know, our tagline is very simple. Move knowledge, not people. Over the years, we've seen in each of the places where we all reside, that people come to where knowledge is. They come to the specialist hospitals. They leave their livelihood at times especially people in underserved areas, mortgage land, borrow money, and come to get the right treatment. And we started off with one man's vision of if that knowledge could be there where the patient is, how would it overturn this entire paradigm of treatment? Can we move knowledge rather than move people? So what is our our aim. Our aim is to democratize knowledge. Our aim is to make knowledge available where it should be. That is the core uh, seed from which the ECHO movement has grown. And that is what uh, you know governs all of us. That can we shift the knowledge to where people need it? So let's, let me just share ECHO India's brief history. We started off in 2008. ECHO globally started off in 2003. In India, we were registered as a charitable trust in 2008. From 2008 to 2014, 15, nothing much happened. And the what changed in 2014? It was the evolution, the availability of broadband, the availability of data connectivity reaching out across India. And ECHO uses technology to amplify the reach of scarce resources. And scarce resources are people who have the knowledge. And we used, in those days, we used Zoom as a platform. And uh, now we have our own platform called iEcho, which incorporates Zoom in it. You will get to know about it. So in 2014, suddenly there was traction because we could start doing video conferencing. So Nibhans, NICPR, and NITRD partnered with ECHO India to start their capacity building programs. Yeah. Yeah, and you will keep seeing this over time. We work through partners. Y'all are the way we reach the underserved people. We don't do anything directly. Y'all actually do the work. We stay at the sidelines coaching and mentoring y'all to the best of our ability. In 2018, you know, NTEP adopts the ECHO model for capacity building, NHM start their partnership programs, NHSRC 2019, NIMHANS came in, in NICPR, and you can see the names out there. And today, we have over 400 plus hubs. Hubs are teaching entities. The entities that have the knowledge, spokes are the learners. And that's the jargon that you will hear me use throughout this presentation. We have over a thousand plus completed program. This number keeps varying. You know, it is you know, 1050, 1070, so we just say thousand plus. We ramped up extensively during the COVID years. COVID years were, you know, very troubled, dark years, and a lot of knowledge had to shift very quickly to the people who needed them, whether it was confidence. In, in the immunization, in the vaccine confidence, advocacy programs, whether it was treatment protocols, whether it was you know reaching out uh, to ASHAs on how do you manage, how do you identify infection, how do you manage, we did all of that there. And recently, what we've done is we've also signed up, we moved into livelihood here. We've also signed up on Jal Jeevan Mission, Ministry of Agriculture has also looked at this model. Because this model is a mentoring model. It is disease agnostic. Within health, it can be used to look at tuberculosis. It can be used to look at COVID vaccination. It can be used to look at 
you know, cancer prevention. And outside it, it can be also used in education and in upskilling school leaders, in uh, you know, uh, farmers' livelihoods in various ways. So, you know, the interventions, we, we've introduced immersions, or what we used to call immersions, we now call them partner launch trainings. Some of the notable guests that have been there have been Dr. Rajagopal, founder of Pallium India, uh, you know, Dr. Prabhat Chandra Nimans, Nita Singla, NNITRD. Uh, we've also, in November 2016, inauguration of the ECHO TV program. These are some of the milestones that have happened over the years. So what is the ECHO model? You know, here I am, I've been talking to you all about the ECHO model, the ECHO model. The ECHO model is a hub and spoke tele-mentoring model. It has four basic principles that define what an ECHO model is. It is, and we, we like, we love acronyms. So we call it ABCD. The first is use technology to amplify the reach of scarce resources. And the scarce resources are institutions or people who have the knowledge. And how can you amplify their reach and help them reach a larger audience? And B is in every echo session. Typically, an echo session is an hour or an hour and a half. You know, we are like drip irrigation. Give small doses of knowledge. Give it frequently. Rather than, you know, you call everybody, give them four days of lectures, you give them so much knowledge that they drown in it, and by the time they reach their home, they've forgotten 90%. So we say, no, give them enough so that they can go back and practice. So in each echo session, we start off by sharing best practices. Now, best practices can be national best practices. There are governmental guidelines, there are protocols, there are best practices. They can be local best practices, state level specific best practices. Or they can be international best practices. Depending on the subject of that ECHO program, best practices are taught or shared, rather, by the hub. C. C is case-based learning. This is the heart of ECHO. ECHO is not a one-way interactive for that hour and a half, we lecture, you listen program. No, it isn't. It is an all-teach, all-learn program. So how do you encourage interaction? You discuss live cases. Of course, anonymized patient details are taken out of that. Initially, the hub shares a few cases to provoke discussion. But in the next week's echo, or the week after that, so the next fortnight's echo, the spokes are encouraged to present cases. And can you imagine a district doctor decides on a case and says, listen, you know, two weeks ago you...